Section 6.1. In these examples, we'll factor out the greatest common factor, or the GCF. 4x minus 48, if you look carefully, 4x and 48 are both divisible by 4. We are going to take the 4 and put it in front of a set of parentheses. And then I'm going to figure out what I need to multiply by 4 to give me a 4x back. That means I need an x here, because 4 times x yields 4x. And 4 times what gives me negative 48? That's going to be 12. And so this is factored completely. If we were to check our work, we'll distribute the 4 times x. That's 4x. And 4 times negative 12 is negative 48. So this is a good factorization of 4x minus 48. In the next example, again, look carefully. They have a common factor. What's the common factor of 16, 48, and 8? The common factor is 8. So I can take out the 8 out of each term. 16 divided by 8 is 2, so we have 2x here. 48 divided by 8 is 6, and so this must be 6x. And 8 divided by 8 is 1, so this must be a 1. And if I'm not sure, I could check my work again. 8 times 2x squared is 16x squared. 8 times 6x is 48x. And 8 times 1 gives us 8. So this is the correct factorization for our problem. In the next example, 35, 49, and 21 have a common factor of 7. Let's take that out to the front. And we also have a common factor of x. So look carefully. There's powers of x here that we have to consider. There is x to the 6 here, x to the 4th, and x to the 11th. The largest power of x that I can pull out from all three is an x to the fourth. I can take an x to the fourth from all three terms. And if you look at the y component, this has an exponent of 1, this has an exponent of 4, this has an exponent of 6. Since they all have an exponent of at least 1, that's the largest power of y that we can take out. So the GCF is 7x to the fourth y and that divides into all three terms. Now we'll have to figure out what's left over. 35 divided by 7 is going to give me a 5. And if I multiply x to the fourth times x squared I get the x to the sixth back and we don't need a y here because y times 1 gives you y to the 1. To create a 49, I need a 7 here. And we don't need an x to the 4th, because if we were to multiply 7x to the 4th y times 7, there is already an x to the 4th. But I need a y cubed, because this y to the 1st times y cubed will give us the y to the 4th. 7 times 3 gives us 21, so we need a 3 here. And x to the 4th times what will give us x to the 11th? Well, that's got to be x to the 7th. And y to the 1st times what will give us y to the 6th? Well, this must be y to the 5th. And this is our factored expression. In this example, we have 5x times the quantity 2x minus 7 plus 8 times the quantity 2x minus 7. Notice 2x minus 7 appears twice. I can factor that completely from each term and that leaves me with a 5x plus an 8. If I want to check my work, what we're doing is we're taking the entire expression here, 2x minus 7 and we're multiplying it to 5x and that does give us the original terms back and then we're going to do that again 2x minus 7 times 8 well that gives us this original term back so we know this is a good factorization
for this expression. When we are factoring by grouping, we look at the first pair and the second pair. Let's look at the first pair and then the second pair. The first pair has a common factor of x. So we'll factor that out to the front, leaving us with an x plus 6. For the second pair, we have a common factor of 7. We will take out a positive 7 to the front of this parentheses, and then we'll figure out what we need to produce 7x plus 42 back. 7 times x gives me 7x. 7 times 6 will give us 42. So this is factored with 7. And now, notice we have x plus 6 and x plus 6. That can be factored to the front as well, leaving x plus 7 inside parentheses. In the next example, same process. Let's look at the first pair and the second pair. In the first pair, notice they have a common factor of x. We'll factor out the x, leaving behind x minus 3. For the second pair, we have a common factor of 6. But if you were to factor out a 6, notice what happens. We would get left over a negative x plus 3. And that causes a problem. We would be stuck because we can't continue on and finish the problem because x minus 3 is different than negative x plus 3. So this fails. We'll try it again. Instead of factoring out a 6 here, we'll try something else. Let's restart the problem. I'll factor out the x to the front. That leaves us an x minus 3. And instead of factoring out a 6, let's factor out a negative 6. And you'll see why. If we factor out a negative 6, that leaves us x minus 3, which means we have a common factor. Again, x minus 3 is a common factor of, two, of these two terms. I can factor that to the front, and that leaves us with an x and a negative 6 left over. And this is our factored form. Again, at any moment, please pause the video and try some of these questions on your own. In this example, I am going to look at the first pair. They both contain a factor of 2, and they both contain an x. So we'll take 2x to the front, and then we'll ask 2x times what gives us a 2x squared. Well, we need an x here. And 2x times what gives us negative 10x. That's got to be a 5. For the second one, again, i got to be careful. In the previous question, we were able to factor a negative 6. Here, I can do the same thing. x and 5 do have a common factor. Let's take out a negative 1. If we take out a negative 1, that leaves us with x minus 5. And if it is the same here, then we did it right we can factor out an x minus 5 again. And as a result, we're left with a 2x minus 1. Since this has four terms, factor by grouping is the only way to do it. Let's take out the 2x to the front, since 2x and 10x have a common factor of 2x. That leaves me with x plus 5 and 6x and 30x have a common factor of 6. We'll take out a plus 6 to the front, leaving us with x plus 5. Again, x plus 5 and x plus 5 are the same, which means I could pull that factor to the front, leaving us with a 2x plus 6 left over.